Welcome to the Attraction Group Podcast. This is episode 71. I'm Ryan Sir. With me always is Don Helbig. Don, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Ryan. How about you? I'm doing well. You know what? I thought of a good uh, little thing that they should put inside the bubblegum wrappers, you know, that they have for like bazooka and stuff. Uh, and because we're all like separated politically uh, with geography and all that stuff. The world's a tum like a tumultuous place. But I think that we could just separate human beings into two categories. Category number one, people that say that Dollywood is their favorite park. <laughs> Category number two, liars. <laughs> so with that well, that's right there are two kinds of people that's right those that love dollywood and those who lie and say they don't but yeah you're right but uh with that in mind uh we're very excited about our guest on this episode of the, the attractions group podcast he serves as the director of public relations at dollywood and of course i'm talking about wes ramey wes how are you i am doing well how are you guys Doing great. Glad to have you on the podcast. So tell us a little bit about uh, what you do at Dalek. How long have you been there and and what kind of your main role was there? Well, it's it's a lot. I, I think every single day I'm doing something different, but I would not have it any other way. Uh, so I will actually finish my 11th season uh, when we close out this year. So my anniversary will be January 2nd. Uh, I, before this, I actually worked at Bristol Motor Speedway uh, up in Bristol, Tennessee. I uh, was a major motorsports fan growing up, always wanted to work in motorsports, but there were some changes there. And I said, you know, maybe I, I always said I wanted to get a different job, but I didn't want to grow up. So I went from a racetrack to a theme park. So it worked out well for me, but Dollywood was my home park. Uh, I grew up about an hour and 15 minutes from it. So uh, my wife is from the Knoxville area. So it just made sense. Um, I started in 2013 and it's just been an amazing ride since. I can't believe it's been that long. Uh, we've had an amazing amount of growth since that time, and we've added to the team. Uh, the properties are growing. Just a, a great place to be, great time uh, Just that we've all had over the last several years, watching it grow uh, with the new attractions and everything. But day to day, it, it, literally, it's something different every day. It's uh, We have so many media coming in, of course, uh, to cover, especially the last few years with the growth of the park and with Dolly being as hot as she is right now, just everybody wants to talk about Dollywood and, and we love that, but uh, just, uh, you know, so much fun. We operate all of our social channels through our PR team. We work with human resources to make sure all of our hosts are getting what they need as well in terms of information, but uh, just a fun time. No, no two days are the same. Yeah, absolutely. And like I said, I mean, Dollywood, man, how can that just saying it puts a smile on your face? So, uh, so okay, so Dollywood Smoky Mountain Christmas has been recognized as one of the best theme park Christmas events. Um, so one of the the featured events in it is the joy the joyful drone show. Did I get that right? I wanted my first question I ask you to be about a drone show. Let's talk about the tell me about the drone show and how that adds to the festivities. So if you look at our summer festival a few years ago, we added our uh, Sweet Summer Nights drone show, and it was a great way to end the evening. Uh, we've had so many folks telling us, you know, this is the perfect way to end a day at Dollywood. Uh, the first year that we did it, we actually had a smaller show because half of the drones, uh, Intel, uh, the chip manufacturer, they produced the drones and the show. Half of their drones were actually uh, in Japan for the opening ceremonies of the Olympics. <laughs> So we were, we were only able to do about half the size of the show the first year, but everybody loved it. So we were able to add to that for the summer festival. So we were looking at ways for Christmas to look at different opportunities to end the evening um, with a lot of uh, this time of year in our area, it can get kind of dry. We, we haven't had a lot of rain this fall. So our area governments rightfully enforce uh, burn bans. So for us, when that happens, we're able to or not able to do a few things. Uh, one of those, we can't run the Dollywood Express during those extreme burn bans. We also can't shoot fireworks. So what was happening is we would go into these drought periods where we were unable to shoot the fireworks this time of year uh, near Christmas. And we said, what can we do? And based on the popularity of the drone show in the summer, we said we have the perfect answer. We just make it Christmas themed. And so this year we we did the Joyful Drone Show and, and folks are loving it. Um, it's up in Wildwood Grove. 
There's a laser show element uh, as part of that, alongside, alongside some cold pyro fireworks. So we can use those even during the drought conditions. So that's really been able to give us something that we're able to depend on every single night to be able to provide for our guests. But just, you know, so glad that we're able to do that. We were the first to do one of that size on a regular basis uh, back with our summer show. So to be able to add it to Christmas just really made sense. You had a chance to see the drone show um, a couple of weeks ago when I was there. I mean, just absolutely loved it. And it was the perfect way uh, to cap the day at the park. Um, so Ryan mentioned, you know, that it's award winning there with your Smoky Mountain Christmas event 15 times. I believe it's been voted the best uh, theme park Christmas event. So what aspects of it do you think contribute to this uh, prestigious recognition that you get almost every year, it seems like? You're right. You know, it really is the hard work that goes into it, I think, is the first part of it, because our crews begin hanging Christmas lights in June. So they take them down every year. We, we make sure that uh, it keeps them from fading and make sure they're in, in good condition when we start putting them back up just a few months later. But a lot of work goes into that. Our teams, uh, we call them the lighting bugs. So they're working overnight. They're working um, anytime the park is closed to get those lights up. That's the first element of it. Then when the Harvest Festival closes, I think this year they had four days to completely turn the park from harvest to Christmas, which is a feat uh, in and of itself. But for it to look the way it does it is amazing. So, A, I would say it's just the hard work of the teams to make sure that everything looks the way it does. Because then, especially with first time guests, you see them come into the park. And as the sun goes down and the lights really start to, to come to you know be able to be visible, you can see the look on their face and that's why the teams work so hard to to be able to get the park the way that it does so you've got the first time guests it's amazing for them but then you have so many families who this is a tradition for them i grew up going to dollywood at christmas there are families who for generations uh, since this festival began in 1990 they've been coming every year they they see the shows they eat the food and then they end the night with the lots and you know i say it it's kind of cliche but Really, if you come to Dollywood this time of year and you're not in the Christmas spirit, if you don't leave in the Christmas spirit, then you're just Scrooge. There's there's no <laughs> way around it. You can't leave not excited and just in the Christmas spirit because of everything that's going on in the park this time of year. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely agree with you there. People often ask me, what is my favorite time of year in the park? And I think it depends on what kind of mood I'm in as to, to my answer. But I think consistently i would tell you summer because you know that's when you go to a theme park you're you're out late at night warm nights you're riding coasters but equally as much for me as christmas just because it is so beautiful and you do see so many families and you know you're able to help them have that experience and make those memories that they're always going to remember i remember it and i know that uh, our guests when they come are going to be able to have those same memories and that that's what's so special yeah. So, um, you, you know, talking about the Dollywood Smoky Mountain Christmas, um, one of the themes that I kind of noticed with with my visits there is that there's a lot of emphasis on like family traditions and things of that sort. A, a lot of the secular aspects of, of of Christmas using Dolly to emphasize that. Um, can, can you kind of elaborate on, you know, Dollywood's stance on the whole, like how to pitch Christmas to people as far as the Christmas spirit and things of that sort? Uh, and throw a little dolly into the mix because you can't hurt by doing that. For so many of the people that come from this region to visit us, it, it is a tradition, but we want to be able to reach more folks uh, further out in, you know, different markets that we're, we're reaching to be able to come and enjoy that time with us and their families at Dollywood. And, and for us, we want to be able to tell the story of Christmas. So we have some shit shows that, that take care of that. Dolly, of course, uh, through some different show elements and different features throughout the park, she tells her uh, traditions, her family memories of growing up in this area at Christmas time. And, and we tell about the birth of Jesus through our oh Holy Night show. So uh, all of that's important to us. We have the, the chapel, the Robert F. Thomas Chapel in the valley in the park. We have the car candlelight carolers. They come out and sing uh, on the front steps there, which is just a beautiful time of the evening to listen to them just with the lights on the chapel. So just it's important for us to be able to share that. But at the same time, the most important thing for us is we want to be able to provide that place 
where families can come together. There's so much going on in the world. Um, we want them to be able to come into the gates of the park and try to forget about what's going on in your life, forget what's going on outside the gates and enjoy time with the people that you are there with. Because, you know, everybody's got a phone these days. Everybody has a thousand things to do, especially at Christmas time. I know my family's calendar is go, 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 go. So if you can come into the park and spend just a few hours, but if you can spend all day making those memories, that's, you know, 20 years from now, that's what you're going to look back and remember. You're not going to remember the hustle and bustle and running from place to place, trying to get ready for Christmas and all the different parties that blend together. You're going to remember those moments where you were, you know, laughing on Wild Eagle or you were enjoying you know, a funnel cake, sitting by the tree show and watching that. Those are the memories that you take years down the road. And that's what's important to us, to be able to give people that opportunity and that space to be able to do that. Yeah, you know, Wes, one of the things I always like about uh, going to uh, your park for the Christmas event is you get there early enough in the day and it's still Dollywood. You know, you get to ride the rides and, you know, go to the different restaurants and things. But then as the sun kind of goes down, you know, all the lights start, uh, you know, coming up and you, you just really see it all kind of just coming together, taking shape. Uh, one of my favorite areas is the Glacier Ridge area. Talk about that part of the park a little bit. Yeah, so Glacier Ridge uh, came online in 2018. And the reason for that, and, and you notice the, the color scheme stays consistent from the time you enter kind of around Thunderhead in the Timber Canyon area, all the way up around to the upper Craftsman's Valley area. And with that, that was intentional because prior to that, most of the Christmas lights were down on the bottom side of the park. So we didn't have a lot of decoration up on that side. We did have some, uh, but it was much more sparse. So in 2018, uh, we had just installed Great Pumpkin Luminots for the Harvest Festival the year prior. That had a lot of infrastructure that came with it that then allowed us to be able to take the Christmas lights up into that side of the park. So that was a very important move for us because it began to encourage folks during the Christmas season to also be able to go up and visit the top side of the park and kind of spread the attendance for the, the entire park out further across uh, Dollywood and give folks a little more room to maneuver and see the lights. But it, to me, it's spectacular. They started with LEDs. That was the first part of the park that really had a heavy emphasis on including LED lighting throughout it. And those lights just pop and they're in a very cool and very bright color tone uh, to mimic the, the North Pole with the polar bears and, and the icy tones. But very beautiful side of the park. And at the time, it contrasted greatly with the warm lights that are found on, down on the, uh, the bottom side of the park. So it really did then lend itself to us now having zones within the park. So if you go down into the uh, country fair area, uh, they have traditionally decorated that in red and white and call it Peppermint Valley. So it just gave us more opportunities to really go with enhanced theming with the color schemes of the lots and the decorations throughout the park. But Glacier Ridge is awesome. We have a, an amazing partner, Goo Goo Cluster. Who doesn't love a Goo Goo Cluster? So they're <laughs> a, a great sponsor on Glacier Ridge, which, you know, you can't go wrong with chocolate and an amazing lot. So uh, just a, a great area of the park this time of year. Yeah, it looks amazing through there. It really does. Okay, Wes, so you you were talking to us before the show, and, and you touched on this a little bit about the massive growth that Dollywood in particular has made. So let's kind of touch on that. Um, so you got the Dream More Resort. I have stayed there. It's wonderful, by the way. Uh, and recently you opened Hearthsong. Um, what are some of the Christmas activities or special things that you can do at the resorts? We try to make sure that it doesn't matter if it's Christmas harvest, flower and food festival, we try to take those elements from the park and bring them over to the resort. So if you're staying at Dream More or Heart Song and you go over to the park, when you come back, it's kind of seamless. You're, you're still able to experience a lot of what's going on at the park, even when you're resting uh, at the resort. So you'll see us bring in it, um, a lot of entertainment. So a lot of the streetmosphere characters uh, and roaming performers that you'll see at Dollywood, some of them will show up at the resorts and they'll be playing in the lobby and in different parts of the resort. So that is continuous. Our chefs work together closely. The, the executive chef team over at the park works closely with the team at the resorts to make sure that a lot of the food items kind of mirror up across so that 
as you move from park to resorts, you have that seamless experience, especially if you're taking the, the uh, trolleys, which are you know very convenient just to hop on, take you right to the door of the parks and then back to the resort. Um, but we want to make sure that the hospitality and everything that you feel at Dollywood translates across to the resort properties. So when you show up there, it's just one seamless experience. So you'll see, especially at Christmas, the decor, very similar. Uh, we have at Dreammore, we have a, an enormous uh, tree in the lobby, two story tree there in the lobby of Dreammore. And we just had a Christmas tree lighting at Heart Song the other day with a, a giant tree that's outside those four story windows of the lobby there. And it, it really is, like I said, about continuing that experience, even when you're at the resorts so that you know you're at a Dollywood property. Yeah, Wes, one of my favorite rides in the world is the Dollywood Express. And it's not, uh, you know, like for the Christmas season there. I mean, it's it's very much a part of it. You've got it uh, decked out and lights and everything. Talk about experiencing a ride on the Dollywood Express once, you know, the sun goes down during your Christmas event. Well, you know, I always say this time of year that to me, the Dollywood Express kind of reminds me of the Polar Express. It's very just traditional Christmas who doesn't love a steam train and you you get on the the cars you bundle up real t uh, you know real warm and you go to the top of the the mountain but as you're going you're able to look out over these christmas lots all over the park um, my favorite part of that trip is as you go up by wildwood grove and you're able to look back across wildwood grove with the lots there it's just a, an amazing viewpoint uh, but the dollywood express you know really is outside of the coasters it's certainly the most uh, ridden attraction uh, but i would say across the spectrum of our guests it's the most popular because everybody loves riding the dollywood express and you know our team there they do an amazing job keeping uh, keeping the two trains up and running because as i say you can't go to o'reilly auto parts and pick up anything that may be missing there so that's no, a, you yeah, you, so they do an amazing job of working and making sure that they have the parts, they have the tools that are available to them. So if something does break, they're back there working to get it turned as quickly as they can, because we don't want to upset the guests, many of whom are coming to get that special train ride during the Christmas festival on the Dollywood Express, because it offers a view that you're not going to get uh, anywhere else, really. Yeah, I've been in line for rides there, and I've let people go by me because I see it coming around the mountain. So I'm like, no, just go ahead. I'm going to watch the train go by. And that, I mean, it's just like the coolest thing. And uh, you can hear that from for miles, but. Uh, really can. Yeah. And I think that's fun just because of the fact that, uh, you know, if you you can be in Pigeon Forge, we can be out at lunch sometime and you, you hear the train whistle and it just reminds you of, you know, Dollywood and, and being home for us. Yeah, I mean, exactly with that. But no, it's uh, that is to me is like a can't miss attraction when you go to Dollywood. I know sometimes people they are always you know, we got to get on the roller coasters. We got to go do this. You got to ride the train. Definitely. There's, there's no doubt about it. It is a must see attraction when you're with us. So enough about trains, you two. Uh, so <laughs> one of the biggest elements of Christmas is, is like food, special treats and stuff and so on. What are some of the food options that are special for just the Christmas and holiday season at Dollywood? Well, that's what's so awesome about our team is they are always looking for new things. They're always coming up with different things. Uh, we had a TV segment the other day with a, a TV station out of the Tri-Cities, and they came down, and the chefs always try to make items uh, for those segments that you can do at home. So one of the items you can get in the park is uh, their Chipotle turkey nachos. So when you have those leftover Thanksgiving turkeys or if you have a turkey at Christmas, Take those leftovers and they do this amazing uh, nacho basket with the turkey and just the different spices on there. So that's amazing. But a lot of the traditional meals you'll be able to find in a lot of the restaurants, ham, again, turkey, um, and then dressing, gravy, mashed potatoes, but then a lot of carry items that you can pick up, walk. There's a chicken pot pie and a, a bread cone, which is really good. Um, and then my favorite, the potato tornado with all the different toppings on that is spectacular. Uh, we've got a red velvet whoopie pie that they're doing in the bakery that is the size of like a saucer. It's huge. Um, obviously, the 25 pound apple pie is always at the park, but I feel like at Christmas it has a little extra meaning behind it. They did uh, eggnog cupcakes this year, just all kinds of hot chocolates and, and flavored drinks. So just 
so much uh, to enjoy food wise. We have a tasting pass. So I would say the hardest part about working at Dollywood is walking past the food because there are times <laughs> that I would like to just stop and eat everything that I see. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the food there is outstanding and, you know, you touched on, a, uh, you know, several of the items that uh, I was able to try while I was there, but, you know, very much a part of the experience, but let's move on from food to, you do have the rides open uh, during uh, this event. And I like the way at night, you know, just with the lights and everything like that, they all kind of just blend into the spirit of the event. Talk about that a little bit. You know, if you step back and you look at our attractions and and literally step back and look at them and how they're constructed, you know, we, we do a good job, I think, when they're constructing the rides of making sure we, we, we do the best job we can to not disrupt the natural environment. We are in the middle of the Smokies. We're literally at the footsteps of the most visited national park in the entire country. So the natural beauty, the topography of our area is very important. So as the rods are built, they're built into that landscape. You know, look at Big Bear Mountain, which is brand new. It really does hug the terrain. Um, we didn't have to do a lot there to be able to allow it to do that. Wild Eagle obviously built up onto the hillside there for the first lift. Um, lightning Rod goes back into the valley and really hugs those curves. So that is element one of that but then you're you're right they really do blend in seamlessly into the the area and, and that's what's so cool and we try to with up lighting and a lot of the accents that we put on the rides to be able to theme them to the different areas of the park to make sure that they are seamless and that they do continue to fit into the theme of whatever area of the park they're in but you know to me i think wild eagle just it's so striking at night with the up lighting on it and it just kind of rises up over the hill and then the loops as you're walking down through timber canyon just you you get a really good view of that ride and this time of year it's just really special yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, it just looks, I mean, like I said, everything just works. It all fits together so beautifully there. Yeah. And, you know, as you walk, as you're walking down through Timber Canyon, if you look at Mystery Mine with the outside facade there on that building, they're able to do so many things with, you know, projected lighting and different items that are placed on the ride uh, facade itself that it really does lend itself to the different festivals for decoration as well. You know, uh, Dollywood obviously does such a great job of, you know, emphasizing the family spirit and the Christmas spirit and stuff like that. To you as a patron, what, is, what do you think Dollywood does best as far as promoting the Christmas spirit? You, you kind of mentioned you can't walk in there without walking out with the Christmas spirit unless you're a Grinch. Is it, what, what do you think that what do you think <laughs> is done so right by Dollywood uh, in order to accomplish this? Because I'm not disagreeing with you at all. Well, I, I think it's one thing really that sets it off uh, more than anything. And, you know, the decorations are beautiful. Everything is is just like I said before, we're in the, the heart of the Smokies. Everything is beautiful. But to me, the thing that sets Dollywood apart and it's at Christmas, it's during harvest, it's every single day we're open. And that's the employees who work in the park. We call all of our employees hosts. And I think at the end of the day, that's what really sets us apart from a lot of other parks. It's the heart of our hosts uh, to treat our guests like guests, like you're coming into our home as a guest, not even a visitor, a guest, someone that we know, someone that we appreciate. And when a lot of our guests leave, they tell us, I felt like I was part of the family. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave. I, I felt like I was appreciated and, and loved. And, you know, that's what we say. We want you to love every moment. That's our tagline. Uh, and that can mean different things based on where you place the emphasis of the word, uh, you know, emphasis on the word. So love every moment or we want you to feel loved every moment it just depends, you know, what you how you place the emphasis. But it does get to the heart of what we do and how we want to uh, treat our guests when they come so much. So, like I said, that we, we call our employees hosts because that will, that's what we're doing. We're hosting you in our home. And when you leave, we want you to feel part of the family. So I think at the end of the day, the fact that we're able to do that for our guests and provide them that location where they can come, have that time together, that's what sets the park apart from everything else. Six million lots don't hurt, but at the end of the day, it really is what uh, we're able to provide to our guests in terms of, of care when they're here with us. 
Well, what you're talking about is going to kind of segue into my next uh, question for you. Dollywood earned a spot in Forbes Best Customer Service 2024 list, and that's a huge deal. Uh, could you elaborate a little bit more even uh, in terms of uh, what the customer service and, you know, just what a recognition, you know, like this means to everybody there? Yeah, so that was very special. We were unaware that that list was even being created and then found out about it once it was released. So uh, Forbes worked with a company that put out 200,000 surveys. Uh, as part of that, uh, I think 3,000 different brands across the country were recognized within it. Uh, and we ranked in the top 1% of those 3,000 brands that were even mentioned as having exemplary customer service. So that's special in and of itself, but we, we ranked 27th. Um, so there were 300 recognized in the best customer service list. And for us to be 27th, we were the number two company that was associated with the travel industry. So Hawaiian Airlines was 25th. We were 27th. Uh, Delta was 39th. Um, I believe Alaskan Airlines was maybe 49th and Drury Inn and Suites were somewhere in the 50s. But you, you looked at the top five. It was the UPS store, Chick-fil-A, uh, USAA, REI, Trader Joe's, these amazing national brands that are known for their customer service. And here we were not far behind within, you know, 20 some positions of those companies. And that's every brand across the company or across the country. And I think that goes back to what we were just saying, like Don, you alluded to, is the fact that when you come to the park, we want to take care of you no matter what that that means. So the four there were four things they were looking at when they looked at uh, that survey speed of service, the actual service or goods that were provided, the people that you interacted with. And then finally was a problem resolution. And I feel like we, we try to do a good job of that at the park, because at the end of the day, we want you to leave happy and we're, we're going to work with you to help you have that good experience. And if you come to us and say, you know, my experience today was not great for whatever reason. We're going to work with you to try to help you either be able to come to a resolution there or come back another time and help visit the park and, and be able to have that experience that we want you to have. Now, when you get recognized like this, you know, I'm going to just kind of step into if I was, you know, working at Dollywood or something that really makes you feel like you're truly part of something special, doesn't it? really does. And we try to celebrate with our employees, our hosts all the time, because it is that family feel. So you're not going to be able to provide the care to our host or to our guests that they need if you as a host don't feel loved for and cared for. So it's these awards are recognition of what they're accomplishing and the, you know, just the skill they have sometimes of being able to connect with our guests is amazing. But to be able to recognize that year round is important to us, but we make sure that we're pouring into our host at the same time by giving them a lot of great benefits, um, free health care. Uh, we've got a health care center on the property that, you know, our, our folks can go to and visit free to college tuition through the Hershen program that they have with all of the Hershen properties, uh, free lunch. Just things that you don't find everywhere. Great perks. We're able to go visit a lot of other parks, a lot of other attractions in the area uh, for free with our families. And all of those things really do go back to making sure the host feels appreciating, appreciated and cared for so that they can then show that same uh, care and appreciation to our guests. So I feel like I can answer this question for you, but I'm a journalist and I must ask, so Big Bear Mountain, I, I did get to ride it. What's the public reaction been to that? Um, it is the perfect ride for our park. And that is what we're hearing for guests. And if you look at our park and really what I've been saying this entire time, it's about making memories, about making memories together as a family. Big Bear Mountain with a 39 inch height requirement lets you do that. It's, you know, for me, it's a pretty thrilling ride. You know, but it's very rewritable. You know, it feels faster, I think, a lot of times than it truly is because, you know, as we mentioned earlier, it hugs the ground. You're pulling some G's in some places. But my kids, you know, five and eight love riding the ride. You know, we were able to start getting them on some of our roller coasters when they were around four years old because of that 39 inch height requirement. So it goes back to me saying it's the perfect ride for the park because 
our goal is to make sure that our guests, when they come to the park, are able to make memories as a unit, as a family together. So for my kids and a lot of kids who come and they're able to ride Big Bear Mountain or Dragon Flyer or Fire Chaser Express with that 39 inch height requirement, that's a thrilling ride for me. But for them at four years old, that's their first real roller coaster. And that's what's so special is, you know, a lot of times, you know, now that I'm in the industry, everybody's always asking, what was your first roller coaster? Where was your first roller coaster? Mine was Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> but my kids now will be able to say, well, I rode Fire Chaser Express or, you know, that, you know, for both of my kids, Fire Chaser Express was the first big roller coaster I was able to ride. So to be able to provide that for our guests so that when they leave, and the kids are able to say my first big roller coaster they feel big they feel like they've accomplished something and they did it at dollywood so big bear mountain to me fun coaster um but it really is the right coaster for our park yeah i, I think that uh you know what i really like about dollywood is you do have those rides big bear mountain uh, being one of them where everybody in the family can enjoy it together the worst thing for me is when you go someplace and one or two people in the family, you know, they're going to go ride the big, you know, 300 foot tall coaster, but three or four other family members are sitting on the bench waiting 45 minutes to an hour for you to get back. Uh, so I really like, you know, the way it is at Dollywood where you just go around the park. Everybody can do pretty much everything together. I think that's awesome. I enjoy the 300 feet roller coasters myself, but you're right. Somebody has to stay behind because the kids either don't want to or they're too too small to ride it. So somebody gets left behind with them while everybody else goes off and has this great experience. But you're right. If you look at Wildwood Grove, for example, as we were laying out those ride attractions, it was very intentional. We wanted to make sure that, you know, maybe somebody did go want to ride a roller coaster. But nearby are rides like the Mad Mockingbird, which honestly probably is. I love the flying scooters. They're probably my favorite ride in the park, to be quite honest. Um, but you've got, got the Mad Mockingbird nearby. You have Black Bear Trail. You have the Great Tree Swing. All of that's still nearby. So if somebody does want to go ride Dragonfly or Big Bear Mountain and somebody is a little hesitant, there are other things right there nearby to do with smaller members of the family or, or those who just don't care for, for coasters. So trying to be intentional with that layout is something we're really trying to focus on more as we continue forward. Yeah, that big black barrel trail, that is the most adorable ride out there. I love it. Make sure I ride it every time that I go and uh, make sure somebody, you know, my wife usually has been assigned on that to get my photo coming around the bend and stuff, but just so much fun. It is. And, you know, you talked about your photo, that ride, if you look at the layout of that ride was designed intentionally, you come around the front side and then you kind of work back toward the, where you kind of start but the path goes back through there. Well, that's to allow families, that's to allow mom and dad a place to go in there to make sure they're able to get those photos of the kids as they go by. And there's ample time as it works around that little plaza area in there to be able to get plenty of photos as they go around because it is a fun ride. It is cute, uh, but it, it sets us apart. Again, something else that is true to our heritage with the, the Black Bear Trail. You know, we have all the bears and the Smokies, so obviously the intentional theming there, but to be able to provide an experience that people love is something different. It's not something you see everywhere uh, has been really, really great. Wes, so, you know, it, it, this is one of those things that I've, I've got to ask, and, you know, several questions come to mind about what your favorite ride is, and you mentioned flying scooters, and that would be correct. That is a great ride. Um but when when it comes down to uh, Dollywood, you know, there's always expansion and stuff. You guys have made some kind of light announcements about what's coming in 2024 uh, as far as like Chasing Rainbows uh, Museum and so on. Can you talk about that and like what the plans are for that as far as the new uh, Dolly Parton experience? So we should open uh, hopefully uh, in May it is the plan right now. And it'll be three different experiences of, as part of that. So before, as you mentioned, Chasing Rainbow was in the main building there in the uh, Adventures in Imagination. So that whole land now becomes the Dolly Parton experience, uh, headlined mainly by that building, which now becomes Song Teller, which is one of the books that Dolly has recently uh, published. Um, and you'll be able to go in and you kind of follow her journey from Sevierville, 
um, all the way to Nashville. Uh, one scene in that is you're going to go into an area and you'll actually be able to sit down on a bench if you like, just like in a bus like she took when she graduated high school and moved to Nashville and learn about the early part of her career. Uh, there will then be areas where you look at her early career with Porter Wagner and some of the acts that she had there as she then started to branch off uh, onto her own. And then you'll open up into a room. There will be a room that focuses on her movie projects. Uh, I think there will be a, a desk there, a, a replica desk from nine to five. So folks will be able to get their picture behind that. There will be an area that's dedicated to her TV projects. And there's a giant swing like the swing she would uh, swing in on uh, on the old Dolly Parton show. So you have those elements. Uh, and then there's an area that will focus on her collaborations through the years with obviously Kenny Rogers, Miley Cyrus, so many different great artists that she's worked with through the years. And then that opens up into a larger room, which if you've been in Chasing Rainbows, you know the scope of that large room where we'll be able to tell uh, a, a short uh, story, but that really highlights her and her career and it'll kind of surround you in that room. So that will be cool. And then as you exit, uh, you'll actually go through an exhibit about the Imagination Library. Uh, which recently we crested 200 million books given away through that program to kids uh, up to the age of five who are registered all around the world. But with that exhibit, there will be a ticker that is constantly counting the books that have been given away. Because I think if you ask her, um, and I, I've heard her answer this, so I know if you ask her what she's most proud of, it's the Imagination Library because, you know, she did that for her father uh, he was unable to read or write, but she said he was the smartest businessman that she ever knew. And if he had had the skill and could read or write, it's amazing what he could have done. So when she started the program, she invited her dad to help her get it going. And that meant a lot to him that she was able to do that, to be able to create a program like that. Um, but for her, I think it meant so much because she was able to get him involved and help him feel like he was now able to help kids learn how to read and write. So very special section there that you'll exit uh, from Song Teller. And then the uh, building that did house Dolly's Closet, that's going to be a new exhibit called Behind the Seams which is also a new book that uh, Dolly has just published about everything from her hair, her, her shoes, her, all of her costumes and all of her show pieces that she's used throughout the year. And, you know, the hope is that those exhibits will change out. So there's something new in there for guests to see periodically. And then the, uh, the theater, so dream song theater stays and the, uh, the show will remain in there with members of her family. But the lobby area of Dream Song will um, be called Precious Memories, and it will tell stories about her family and those who kind of helped her when she was a child uh, to get to where she is now. So uh, very much look forward to that. As I mentioned earlier, I think Dolly is at a stage in her career. It's like it continues. There's there's no letting off the gas for Dolly. She's doing more. She's you know more places, doing more projects. More people know who she is. So I think to be able to provide that for our guests will be great, uh, especially right there at the front of the park, right when they come in. Yeah, Wes, you have award-winning entertainment there. Uh, just a great reputation for that. When I was there a couple of weeks ago, I'm in the queue to ride the carousel. And across from that, near the train entrance, you have uh, the, the, you know, the little you know holiday show right there where they were singing the Christmas songs and that. And a couple of girls in front of me, they were like, that would be so cool to be able to work here. Um, there is that opportunity. You've got auditions coming up, correct? Yeah, we have auditions all the time um, for the park. And that's, you know, very special for us because there have been several artists who have kind of gotten their start uh, at the park. Most recent, and I think most well-known right now is Carly Pierce. So she was a performer at Dollywood when she was 16. Uh, but we've, we've had uh, Susie Boggess is a well-known name in country music who started at the park, but it's a great launching pad. And we're always looking at opportunities for folks to come and, and be part of that. So if you look at the fact that Dolly's name is on the park, you know, entertainment not only is going to be good, it has to be good because Dolly's name is there. So our team goes out um, all across the Southeast. Uh, we've recently been in Orlando. We're going to be in Nashville. You referenced that um, to do auditions for a new show that will be part of the I Will Always Love You celebration or I Will Always Love You Music Festival that will kick off the year next year. Uh, so we're auditioning people for the role of Dolly. 
So that's really pretty cool um, and something that not any other theme park is going to be able to offer. But outside of that, so many great shows throughout the year that we're known for, Dreamland Drive-In, Christmas in the Smokies during this time of the year. Uh, yeah. But we are trying to go out now into further markets to be able to look and cast that net even further for great talent to make sure that our shows do remain at that top level because Dolly's name is on it, so it needs to be good. Yeah, I mean, I've gone to Dolly, wouldn't have done nothing but watch the shows and eat the food, you know, didn't ride any rides and just had a fantastic time. And, you know, that's a great point, too. And I think that is something that um, is special about Dollywood. It doesn't matter the makeup of your group. You know, you may have people that do not want to ride a roller coaster. Well, they can spend an entire day seeing shows, eating food and shopping. Shopping's great as well at the park. Or if you want to do rides, we've got some world class attractions that you definitely need to try out or any combination of the above. So I think that's what really is special about Dollywood is, and again, cliche, but there really is something for everybody to enjoy. Yeah. Is it Dreamland Drive-In? Is that the name of the show by Lightning Rod? Yeah. I've seen that several times. I, that's so cool because it like it, first of all, for those of you who haven't seen it, prepare yourself. It's an hour long. I did not know that coming in and I was like, this is great, but like, it feels like it should have been over a half hour ago. But, um, cause you're, you know, you're used to theme park shows that are a half hour or less, but, uh, it, it really tells such a story without speaking one word. It's, it's all songs, but you completely know where they're getting at. And then, um, the first mm -hmm. time I saw it, uh, it, it's funny because I was, we, we were, we we're waiting for aunt granny's you know, because we have to eat at Aunt Granny's every time we go there. Of, of course, it's tradition. Um, but uh, so we we slipped in there uh, thinking we could kill a half hour and it ended up be much longer, but fell in love with the show. And then I saw it again uh, this year and we sat in like the front row. I think it was like a like a time saver benefit. You can sit in the front if I'm not mistaken. Well, so I didn't realize like some of the details and stuff of like the drive-in sign, how it's like collapsed and then it like comes together and stuff. And then it's broken again. I don't want to ruin the story, but if you, if you've gotten to Dollywood and you haven't seen that show, uh, it's during the normal season. I mean, you're really missing out, but um, so, let, you know, getting back to Christmas. So, you know, a, a season pass at Dollywood obviously would be at the top of anybody who's in the right minds list of things that they want. There are several tiers of season passes to, to the Dollywood resort. Um, can you talk about the different tiers just for clarification? Yeah, so we have the silver tier. Uh, so that's the entry level tier um, that you can purchase. Um, there are blackout dates associated with that, especially during Christmas. And, you know, last year we introduced this model. And, you know, for a lot of people, that was the first time they'd had to deal with blackout dates on one of our passes. And and simply, you know, this time of year is so popular. So what, what we've been talking about for the past, you know, 40 minutes is how popular the park is this time of year. So to be able to maintain a high level of guest experience, we were forced to make some choices uh, as we looked at passes and to make sure that we were able to accommodate the guests who were coming to, to make sure that that experience was what we wanted it to be. So the Silver Pass does have some blackout dates uh, around Thanksgiving through the end of the year. The next tier up is Gold. Uh, which provides you a lot of benefits. Um, I think my favorite benefit of the gold and diamond passes uh, are that uh, for the, uh, we have the golden hour of the morning. So after the park opens that first hour, your, your, your season pass actually works as, as a time saver. So you're able to, you know, get on through the time saver entrance for that first hour, which is really cool. And then the diamond pass is the top tier. It is limited. Um, we typically sell out. I know we're, we're nearing that. We're not quite there yet, but it does sell out uh, every year that we've had it. And it does offer the top tier uh, of benefits. And there are a lot that go along with that uh, special events that you're able to get access to. Uh, a lot of times if Dolly is going to be at the park for an announcement or something to that effect, those are uh, events that are typically set aside for gold and diamond pass holders. Uh, but so many benefits. There's really something for every level, uh, depending on how often you visit, when you visit, um, how much you do while you're there, what kind of discounts you would like to have, uh, different options, obviously, for parking, uh, free parking. So it really does give you the opportunity to tailor it to what you need. Uh, two parks, if you want to go over to visit Dollywood Splash Country in the summer, you know, you have that option. So 
we really do try to be able to offer something for everybody so that you do have a chance to come and experience what we have throughout the season. Even with the Silver Pass, you are able to come during the Christmas festival and enjoy the first several weeks of the festival as well. So there, there really is something for everybody, and we try to make sure uh, we're able to support uh, everybody and come out at any price point. Cool. Awesome. Hey, um, so, uh, you know, obviously like, you know, we could sit here all day, but I don't want to take up all of your night because you've got children to spend time with and, you know, things to do. And you've probably got to be up nice and early in the morning to ride the Dollywood Express, or maybe I'm thinking of Dawn. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> it up in the morning and get it going out. Yeah. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> we'll figure it you, out. They, they probably will appreciate the help. Yeah. The but you have to shovel like, <laughs> like hundreds of pounds of coal to get that thing going a lot of coal okay so for more information on dollywood obviously you can go to the website but uh is there any distinct place that you would recommend if you were thinking about either purchasing a season pass purchasing tickets uh you know uh giving it as a gift like do you have any thoughts on that yeah i tell people just to go to dollywood.com uh because everything they needs there we have a blog that uh, members of our team write that kind of gives you some insight there uh, the dollywood insiders page gives you some more insight um, and then download the app because that's going to you know be an easy place where you can go you can check out show times even as you're driving to the park you can start looking at that um, i think based on what we've said about um, the variety of options that things you can do in the park the best thing to do is to sit down and not plan it to the minute, but kind of get an idea in your head of what you want to do before you get to the park so that you make sure, hey, I want to see Dreamland drive in. What are the show times? That way you can plan your visit to Aunt Granny's and still be able to go see Dreamland drive in. So I think that's um, an important aspect to just make sure, you know, go in, kind of have an idea of what you want to do, what you want to see, and uh, then just go have fun. You don't have to worry too much about keeping to a, a very tight schedule. Uh, it's just a, a fun park where you're able to go. And like I said, the whole time, just forget about what's going on and enjoy the time with the people you're with. Well, that's right. Uh, Dollywood Smoky Mountain Christmas, a can't miss event. If you haven't been there, what are you waiting for? That's it. Come see us. Absolutely. Well, Wes, thank you so much for being on the show. This is a long time coming and it's a true honor. It's uh, We all love Dollywood. And if you don't, you haven't been there. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> cool but uh once again thank you so much uh it's just dollywood.com right for more information on dollywood as well as the smoky mountain christmas yeah. you guys have a very short off season which i'm sure you've noticed yes. um uh so you open yes. up in like march right yeah so our final day of operation this season is january 6th uh, 2024 and we will open back up if you have one of those season passes for our season pass holder preview day on friday march 8th and then uh, Saturday, March 9th to the general public. So it it goes by quickly. Uh, a lot of work happens during the off season. You know, we talked about the Dolly Parton experience that uh, construction project will be ongoing. Uh, and then a lot of other projects throughout the park, just for the overall guest experience. We've done a lot of things the last few years, widened pathways, uh, changed the layout of some buildings and different things just to make sure that the guests uh, feel like they have that room to maneuver and get around the park. So a lot of that, uh, goes on this time of year, despite the cold weather and sometimes snow and ice and everything else that mother nature throws at our teams. Awesome. Well, once again, thank you, Wes Ramey for being on the attractions group podcast, check them out at dollywood.com, uh, link in the description for, uh, you know, information on Dollywood as if anybody listening to this podcast would need that <laughs> level of information on Dollywood, but thank you so much.